There we go. Good day, friends of Buzzy. So today I'm going to do a little talk in honor of someone who sent me a cool picture of their kid that they're a school nurse for. And Julian, the cute little guy, we have permission to use his face, he had a bee sting. So I started thinking about what are all the things that people use Buzzy for that we don't necessarily talk about because we don't have research for them. And then I thought, dude, this is such a fine, fine opportunity to let people know what we don't have research on yet. Because there's like 75 papers and everybody wants to do a needle stick study, but there's definitely better places. So on Beyond Needles, 10 things you didn't know you could do with Buzzy. So fashion, yes, definitely doing a costume. So these are my kids and I invented Buzzy, ooh, I guess when they were probably about seven. Um, so they're a little younger than this here. And then Buzzy went on to be what we used for all of our kids' shots. But at that point, it was just a prototype. So this is our youngest and she had her shots with it for the first person. So then um, we realized that Buzzy was not just about pain, but also about empowerment. So empowerment means teaching kids that they don't need to go reach for a drug when they hurt themselves. And one of the cool things about Buzzy is that people who have either a bee or a ladybug, hopefully have started on the path to learn to use bugs, not drugs. So when we started, it was, our mission was to eliminate unnecessary pain. But I'm kind of in a, a transitional thing where I think that our new mission may be that we wanna change how we think about pain. And certainly if you are needing to be on your depixent and be uh, adherent, then having something to help with needle pain is great. But also, how about the bugs, not drugs? So two stories we've heard um one is a physical therapist who worked for us for a while whenever his kids would bump their elbow or have a boo-boo of any kind they'd go run and get buzzy and it was cool because we realized they had learned that they wanted to go get a bug not pop an ibuprofen or a pill so that will be a great lesson if that moves forward for all of the millions of kids who've used buzzy for their shots uh not only that but on the other end of the age spectrum, one of the grandparents of one of the people who works for us, he had an injury and surgery. And so Buzzy was used when his hand was aching so that he didn't have to take his opioids. So both ends of the spectrum, bugs, not drugs. All right, cool tips. So our number 10 bonus tip, how does Buzzy work? Why does it block pain? And the reason is because the mechanical stimulation frequency that is the same thing when you bump your elbow and you rub it, you're stimulating a nerve and the nerve responds to a very specific frequency. So Buzzy has a little motor in it that gives off that frequency. So it interrupts the pain signal. The word to know is the Pacinian corpuscle. It does position sense and it's the nerve that lets your mind know this is where my body is in space so that you can get away from something dangerous. So that is what we're stimulating is the Pacinian corpuscle. All right, number nine on the list of cool things you can do. So number nine is infusion pain. Now, sure, people know that you can use Buzzy for putting a needle in for infusion, but there's actually a study that was done with subcutaneous injections showing that it blocked pain, so don't do that. And there was a study with propofol showing that it stops the burning. But one of our great buddies sent us something that she had a kid with potassium. And so the potassium burns a lot and putting Buzzy where that burning potassium infusion was through an IV decreased the pain. Nobody to my knowledge has done a specific study on infusion pain. So sub-Q infusion, that's a great area for study. All right, now bonus tip number nine, put the shot near the dot. Because a lot of the pain relief from Buzzy comes from the vibration frequency, we put a tiny little dot on the bottom of the Buzzy where a stinger would go. 
And that little dot is to remind people that you want to get whatever is going to hurt as close as possible to that dot. So when you see the, the way that that vibration is moving, we've oriented it in the device so that it goes into the skin so that it penetrates deeply and gets to that pachinian corpuscle. The deeper it gets, the better the pain relief for joints, for muscles. So bonus tip, put the shot near the dot. All right, interesting use of Buzzy number eight. So we have a lot of people who use Buzzy when they're nervous for um, people who are on the spectrum. And one tip with this is that they really like flicking on and off the switch. So you don't wanna use a mini for this, you definitely want the toggle switch. And I was at, a, I was getting my flu shot last week and the, pharmacist said, oh, you know what? They used this thing for my seven month old. They put it against their chest and turned it on. And I thought that's amazing. That's exactly what our kids who are on the spectrum like to do when they have something that is either causing them pain, like um, if they get migraines or pressure, or if something is hurt, they actually like just having the control and that vibration through their chest. So I thought how interesting that for infants as well as for kids on the spectrum, that feeling against the chest is a great way and that has never been studied. So an opportunity for all you researchers out there. All right, now, number seven, finger injections or finger sticks, never been studied. Injecting warts has kind of been studied in that someone did do a study with injections in the foot of uh, lidocaine, but no one's ever looked at injecting lidocaine for incisions and drainage or even for abscesses in general. And we know that one of the things, one of the characteristics of vibration is that it transfers really well through bone. So the bony fingers, um, putting it on the side, again, put the shot near the dot. So put it close to where you're gonna be doing the poke or just upstream but if you're gonna be injecting warts, it's a great time to go ahead and put Buzzy on. I would do ice if you're doing it for warts. I don't think you need the ice if you're just doing it for a finger stick because it's a little more superficial. Hurts more to be putting stuff into the tissue than it does to be taking things out of the tissue in general. All right, number six, interesting thing you can do with Buzzy, tattoos. We often hear people making fun of anyone who has a tattoo who doesn't like needles. They say, oh yeah, right, you're afraid of needles. Let me tell you, it's a totally different thing. Tattoo needles are very superficial. And while they cause pain, they don't cause the vasovagal response in the same way that going under the tissue, putting fluid in, or getting a vein does. So it's a completely different response it also is different because kids become afraid of needles when they get a whole lot of shots in the doctor's office, but a tattoo needle looks nothing like that and it doesn't trigger the same emotional response. So whether someone has a vasovagal, vasovagal, a fainting reason why they don't like needles or because they've got a bad experience in the past, tattoos aren't gonna trigger that. So you can have a tattoo and still be afraid of needles. That said, tattoos are painful. And so if you have a specifically tender area, um, I've heard that this area is very tender for getting tattoos, then you just wanna put Buzzy along the same dermatome. So kind of like that, if you're going to have a tattoo this way, this will become relevant. Hold this thought when we talk about other things, but uh, so tattoos and of course, getting a tattoo there's a little bit of a, a cred and having pain with it getting it removed less cred and possibly more painful so fuzzy with ice for tattoo removal awesome opportunity for a study so let's talk a little bit about that ice so ice does a different pathway than the vibration what happens with ice is it's running along a fiber called a c fiber which is a a cold or a prolonged compression, light pain kind of a fiber. So when it gets up to the brain, the brain analyzes it to say, 
is this dangerous or not? And if it's not, it sends descending inhibitory control that goes down the spine and reduces pain everywhere in the body. One analogy of this is that if you have pain, you can put your hand in a bucket of ice water and you can tolerate it more and longer. Fun tip. So that's when, so if it's going to hurt more, use ice and ice does take a little bit of time to build up, to go through that process. So about 30 seconds is at least what I would use if you're doing it for something that is very painful. Ta-da. All right. Number five on interesting and unusual things you can do with Buzzy. Lady things. Now, yes, IVF. Tons of people say that Lady Buzz is their BFF for IVF. However, once you're in labor, we have also heard uh, people say Buzzy's the only reason I'm still married. And there are in France uses a Buzzy for spinal taps. So kids who have to get spinal taps for their cancer treatment, they will put Buzzy up on the higher on the spine than where they're going in and use it to block pain lower down. So for labor, um, having your partner or doula have it and rubbing it on the spine, that's a lady thing. Now, once the baby's born, then another great area for research is that we have people who have put the, the packs, um, the ice packs that are used for the, the, uh, the healthcare buzzy. So not, I wouldn't do this with the personal buzzy. So the personal buzzy has a little white pack on it that is fuzzy and that's going to get kind of just sloppy if you put it in a TNT, but with the healthcare ice pack, you can put it in tea and it's warm and then put that on the back of the buzzy and then use it um, if there's a place where the milk hasn't let down yet. So that is an interesting use. Likewise, we know people that when the baby is latching on and there's, especially if there's some um, irritation of the nipple, that having the pain relief from Buzzy with ice this time being in the vicinity can help get over that insanely excruciating latch pain. And for other lady things, uh, using Buzzy or VibraCool for cramps. So because we do have hot packs with the VibraCool Pro, you can get hot packs on the website. Now the hot packs have to, just like the ice, they need to get solid. So they have a little thing in it that you break and then um, it'll spread crystalline heat. Don't use, don't be tempted to squish it around when it's working to go, oh, this is cool. Um, let the crystal form because then that solid will transmit the vibration to block pain. So for IUD insertion or cramps or any kind of pelvic pain, um, super pubic, uh, if you, we know that they do actually use Buzzy for straight calves at Stanford. Mm -hmm. So probably other places too, but no one to my knowledge has studied any of these. So pelvic pain, catheterization, cramps, IUD insertion, breastfeeding, latching, labor. Um, there's at least seven solid pelvic -y ways that we know people are using it. No one's researched it yet. These would be great opportunities. Number four, it should come as no surprise, but Itching is actually just a mild form of pain. Itching and pain both travel on the same A delta nerve. Not only can you put buzzy and ice on a mosquito bite to decrease itching, or as our little guy in this uh, picture has, he's putting it on his finger for a bee sting, but you also can use it for skin testing. Um, and it doesn't have to be directly on it. You can actually put it proximal on the spine because that's going to get all the nerve pathways. Now, itching has been studied in one for uh, allergy testing in one abstract, but to my knowledge, Angela Troger never did publish that puppy. So that would be a really good area for publication if you're in allergy and immunology and you're doing skin testing and you're worried about itching. All right. Number three, interesting and weird thing you can do with Buzzy, 
foreign body removal. So just as you can use Buzzy to block the pain from putting something in, using it to, if you have to dig around to get a splinter out, this, um, the person who sent us the one with the bee sting also said they had a, a kid with lead uh, finger, like a pencil lead under their finger earlier in the same day. Makes total sense if you're doing something on a finger where it's bony, uh, taking out a splinter is going to be just as effective as using Buzzy for a finger stick for glucose or if you're putting in something for warts or molluscum. So splinter removal, yay. Number two, unusual way to use Buzzy. Oh, if only I could have found this other great picture. We'll find it and put it up on Facebook. But um, in addition to a zoo that was using Buzzy for insulin injections for the, one of the lemurs who had diabetes, we also have a woman in Cyprus whose dog has arthritis. And so she puts two Buzzies or Vibracools on her dog's hips and that is helps his pain so that he can climb up and down the stairs. All right, animal pain, great place for research. I am unaware of research in animals with Buzzy. All right, so finally, there are seven dental studies done putting Buzzy on the maxilla. And one of the cool things that has not been done is actually bite wings. So one of the dentists has told us that when he puts Buzzy on the temple, the, the patients don't gag with the bite wings that go in. So certainly that would be a cool area of research. Another cool area is strep swabs. We heard from someone in Montreal recently that they are using Buzzy. Oh wait, it's not Montreal. It's on the other, it's Vancouver. It's Vancouver, British Columbia. Sorry about that, Michael. In British Columbia that they used Buzzy for strep swab and um, put it on the, put it on the cheek. Again, the maxilla, the bone transmits beautifully. So letting a child hold it there gives them control and it's going to transmit to all the soft tissues in that area, in the trigeminal nerve area. Um, certainly, and this is another one, we tried to find a picture, but all of us during COVID using it for the nasopharyngeal swab, oh my gosh, it is night and day putting it on for an NP swab. Uh, without it, you feel like you're triggering or remembering past lives. It hurts so much. And with it, it's just a little bit uncomfortable. So super good area for research if we ever have to go through that again. All right. Well, I hope that you have enjoyed my trip down. Here's a cool thing to do research lane. I'm sure I've left some stuff out. There are a lot of ways that people use Buzzy that we probably haven't heard of yet. So if you have a cool use of Buzzy, please send it along. And by all means, if you get interested in doing a Buzzy research and you have an IRB approved protocol, we don't want to know anything about the results, but we're happy to send you a couple Buzzies to get it done. So thank you so much and please stay in touch. And we'll see you next time on our Facebook Live. If you want any other hints on Buzzy, go and like and subscribe and do all that stuff if you're seeing us on YouTube. Cheers, y'all.